ever felt drained by small talk at a party, struggling to be heard over the din of laughter and clinking glasses? Like when you're cornered by Aunt Mary, who insists on discussing her cat's latest antics in excruciating detail? Or perhaps found yourself overwhelmed in a bustling office space, unable to focus amidst the incessant chatter? Like when you're trying to finish a crucial report due in an hour, but your cubicle neighbor decides now is the best time to recount their weekend escapades. These scenarios are all too familiar for introverts who are often out of their comfort zone in such environments. Maybe the thought of presenting in front of a large audience, your palms sweating as you imagine hundreds eyes boring into you or networking at a business event just makes your blood run cold. Like when you're expected to charm a room full of high-flying executives with clever banter and firm handshakes. If you've ever had such experiences, you might relate to the unique struggles faced by introverts in a world that often seems to favor extroversion. Today, we're going to take a closer look at some of these challenges, and you may find that they resonate deeply if you lean towards the introverted side of the spectrum. Introverts frequently stumble upon the first hurdle of social interactions, the daunting task of small talk. Imagine being at a birthday party, surrounded by people effortlessly conversing about the unpredictable weather or the latest episode of a popular reality show. These topics, as easy as debating whether it's going to rain tomorrow as they clear the garden for a barbecue, or discussing who got voted off in last night's episode of a reality show, might be a cakewalk for some. But for introverts, they're a treacherous terrain. They find it as exhausting and superficial as a seasoned swimmer restricted to the kiddie pool yearning for the wide expanse and depth of the ocean. The introverts long for deep, meaningful conversations, much like dissecting the complex characters in a Jane Austen novel or exploring the profound influence of a Christopher Nolan movie, rather than dissipating energy on frivolous, surface-level dialogue. The second struggle is overstimulation overload. Let's take, for example, being in an overcrowded concert where the heavy bass of the music pulsates through your body and the deafening cheers of the crowd make you feel like you're in the midst of a wild storm. Or imagine being in a bustling shopping mall during holiday sales, where the incessant chatter of excited shoppers, combined with the sharp, shrilling sound of sale announcements over the PA system, feels like you're in a noisy beehive or even just a lively social gathering where you're constantly surrounded by a flurry of conversations, laughter, and clinking glasses, as if you're in the middle of a bustling bazaar. These are scenarios where the noise level and the number of people can easily make an introvert feel drained. Introverts, who often need some alone time to recharge their batteries, can find such noisy environments and large crowds overwhelming. Something as mundane as a loud barking dog that sounds like a continuously ringing alarm clock or the constant beep of a truck reversing, which reminds you of an incessant morning alarm, can instigate the same feeling. The third struggle is misunderstood loneliness. Visualize this. You're at a lively birthday party surrounded by animated conversations and the infectious laughter of friends. Yet you find yourself yearning for the familiar comfort of a cozy nook, engrossed in the riveting world of a captivating novel. Or consider a bustling family gathering with joyful kids playing and warm-hearted relatives exchanging stories. Yet amidst this, you're yearning for a solitary afternoon walk, one where you can enjoy the whispering wind and the rustling leaves in peace. This is the world that introverts navigate daily, a world that often idolizes non-stop social engagement. Introverts find solace in solitude. They crave for quiet moments, whether it's a peaceful jog in the park or a reflective hour at the local cafe. Yet they often feel misunderstood and alienated in a society that seems to place continuous social interaction on a pedestal. The fourth hurdle often faced are the networking nightmares. Picture this, you're an introvert, and the concept of self-promotion and attendance at networking events feels like climbing Mount Everest without any training. You feel more at ease forming deep, meaningful connections similar to the feeling of having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a close friend, rather than indulging in fleeting, surface-level interactions, like the empty chit-chat at a grocery store checkout line. For instance, imagine being at a bustling business mixer, akin to standing in the middle of a packed concert where the noise is deafening, and you're expected to bounce from one conversation to another, making small talk with strangers, like you're a TV show host interviewing a line of celebrities. Or consider the dread of walking into a room full of accomplished individuals, like stepping into a den of lions, 
expected to sell yourself and your abilities, similar to a fledgling author pitching their book to a panel of seasoned publishers. These scenarios can be profoundly exhausting for introverts who thrive on one-on-one, -on -one, meaningful interactions akin to a quiet dinner with a lifelong friend. The fifth struggle concerns group dynamics, something many of us have probably experienced in various ways. For instance, consider the scenario of a brainstorming session at work. Maybe you've been in a meeting where the whiteboard is filled to the brim with colorful post-it notes, each bearing a different idea. The room buzzes with enthusiastic chatter and there's a palpable energy in the air. But amidst all this, introverts often find their thoughts drowned out, their ideas overshadowed by their extroverted colleagues who openly share ideas and dominate the conversation. On the other hand, let's take the parallel example of a lively social gathering. Maybe it's a friend's birthday party, filled with groups of people having animated discussions, shared anecdotes inciting belly laughter, and the clinking of celebratory glasses. Yet introverts often feel like a small boat in a turbulent sea in these environments, struggling to assert themselves amidst louder voices and finding it tough to make small talk over the din of the music and laughter. These real life scenarios, which we've all likely encountered at some point, underline the challenge faced by introverts in group dynamics. Public speaking panic is a common issue that many introverts face, and it ranks as the sixth struggle. Think of it this way, you're an introvert. The very idea of presenting a science project in front of a lively classroom or giving a speech at a wedding where all eyes are on you can send chills down your spine. The fear of forgetting lines, much like a student who forgets his valedictorian speech midway, stumbling over words, similar to an actor fumbling on a live telecast, or even the deafening silence as everyone awaits your words, as ominous as the silence before a storm, can induce anxiety. It's akin to being the lead in a play without wanting the spotlight, like an unwilling hero thrust into the limelight. Visualize another situation. You're asked to present a report in a company meeting, much like a new employee unexpectedly asked to present the quarterly earnings. The anticipation, the stares, the quiet as everyone waits for you to speak. It's enough to make any introvert's heart race, like the nervous anticipation before a big race. These situations are the stuff of nightmares for many introverts, making them dread public speaking, like a cat dreads water. The seventh struggle that introverts face is something known as decision fatigue. Imagine being a chef in your own kitchen with an excessive array of ingredients, spices, and recipe books to choose from. That's how an introvert feels in everyday situations. This is when they are confronted with too many choices and options, leading them to feel overwhelmed. For instance, Imagine being presented with a menu at a new restaurant where you're unfamiliar with the cuisine, offering a hundred different dishes. Or visualize a scene where you're standing in a mall, surrounded by numerous brands and endless shopping aisles. Now think about walking into a huge bookstore, a paradise for many but a maze for an introvert, where there are thousands of titles to choose from. For an introvert, these situations can be incredibly daunting, like standing on a stage under a spotlight, their natural inclination is to meticulously ponder over their options, much like a chess player contemplating their next move before finally making a decision. It's not about being indecisive, but more about wanting to make the most informed decision possible, much like a detective gathering all possible evidence before concluding. The eighth struggle deals with the dilemma of work-life balance. Picture John, an introvert who works as an IT specialist, drowned in a sea of unread emails and looming project deadlines at his office, only to dash home to an evening brimming with mandatory social occasions. Just like having to attend his cousin's wedding reception when he'd rather unwind with a good book. Balancing the strains of a high-pressure job with the societal norms of attending cocktail parties, family reunions, or even just impromptu hangouts with friends like his college buddies insisting on a monthly get-together, can feel like moving mountains. On the flip side, imagine Lisa, another introvert who, after a week of interacting with clients in her sales job, longs for a quiet weekend at home, maybe immersed in her painting hobby. But she finds herself persuaded to attend a bustling weekend company outing, complete with team-building exercises and networking. Achieving a balance between these social responsibilities and the essential personal time for introspection, like her cherished early morning yoga routine, and recharging can prove a formidable task for many introverts. 
They, like John and Lisa, require abundant room for solitude and self-reflection. Emotional exhaustion takes the role of the ninth struggle. Introverts frequently internalize their emotions, leading to feelings of exhaustion and burnout similar to a college student during exam season, pulling all-nighters to study. Let's exemplify this. Imagine being in a room full of people where everyone is animatedly talking, laughing, and socializing, akin to being plunged into a fast-paced, boisterous networking event with no escape. For an introvert, this might feel like running a marathon in a desert, no breath of solitude in sight. Now let's consider another situation where an introvert is expected to express their feelings openly at a moment's notice. This can feel as draining as solving a complex calculus problem without any prior preparation, akin to being asked to give an impromptu speech on a topic you know little about. These tangible examples help shed light on how emotional exhaustion can become a reality for many introverts, just like it is for a fish out of water. Lastly, the tenth struggle is the stereotype stigma. Introverts often face misconceptions and stereotypes, such as being labeled as shy, antisocial, or even aloof. For instance, just because Susan prefers to have lunch alone, reading her favorite book, something Harry Potter fans might find themselves doing, doesn't mean she's antisocial. It's like the time when you find peace in enjoying a Netflix series, in the comfort of your own space. Or when Sam turns down an invitation to a wild party, it's not because he's shy. In the same way, you might not feel like going to a huge concert, but rather find joy in a quiet night of stargazing. He finds more comfort in smaller, intimate gatherings, just like a cozy book club meeting or a small dinner party with close friends. These are just a few examples of how introverts can be inaccurately stigmatized in our society, much like how you might feel misunderstood when you prefer a quiet evening at home over a bustling social event. Despite these struggles, it's essential to realize that introverts possess unique strengths and qualities that bring value to the world around them. Consider Albert Einstein, for example. His introverted nature enabled him to concentrate intensely on intricate theories, much like a chess player engrossed in a challenging game, transforming how we comprehend the cosmos. Similarly, Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, fashioned the first Apple computer mainly in solitude, much like a writer penning a novel in quiet isolation. Wozniak stated that he needed solitude to spark his creativity, akin to an artist seeking silence for inspiration. By cherishing and advocating for their introverted traits, much like Einstein and Wozniak, and pushing for their needs, introverts can flourish in a society that applauds diversity, bringing it all together. Introverts often struggle in situations such as engaging in small talk at a social event. Imagine trying to chat with a group of strangers at a wedding reception. They may also be overwhelmed at, say, a loud concert, picturing the blaring music and glaring lights at a rock concert. Misunderstandings can arise when they choose a peaceful evening alone, like choosing to curl up with a good book at home over a wild night out at a downtown club. Networking events, like business meetups or parties, can feel daunting, akin to facing a room full of strangers with business cards. They may experience a sense of feeling lost or overwhelmed in group dynamics, like in a team building exercise or brainstorming session, much like trying to come up with ideas in a hurried, loud room full of colleagues. Public speaking, for instance, presenting to a class or, or giving a conference presentation can compare to standing alone on a stage with hundreds of eyes watching you. After a long day of constant decision-making at work, decision fatigue can creep in. Think about making important choices every minute during a busy workday. Striking a work-life balance can be a struggle, especially when a high-pressure job demands so much of their energy. Imagine feeling drained after pulling a 12-hour shift at a demanding job. Emotional like feeling drained after a day full of social interactions, such as attending a full day of back-to-back -back meetings, and stereotypes like being labeled antisocial when you simply prefer your own company are other hurdles. But remember, by understanding and addressing these struggles, introverts can find their own path and flourish in an extroverted world. I appreciate your company in this journey to understand the introverted experience better. If you find yourself nodding along to these struggles, remember, you're not alone. Embrace your introverted superpowers, perhaps your ability to listen well, Think of how you can absorb and analyze information deeply or your creative thinking when you're alone. 
like painting a beautiful canvas or writing a thoughtful article, and celebrate your unique perspective. Just like you would suggest your pal a captivating novel like To Kill a Mockingbird, don't hesitate to like, share, and even subscribe so you can continue navigating this mesmerizing universe of human psychology with us. Think of it as stepping into a library that is as insightful as the world-renowned British Library. Until we embark on our next adventure into the engaging enigma that is the human mind, an enigma as complex as solving a Rubik's Cube, always look after yourself. Bear in mind, you're as distinctive as a fingerprint, as unique as the one-of-a-kind Mona Lisa, so always remain true to yourself.